Hello, everybody. This is David from Valley WorkSafe. Today, I want to talk about scaffolding. Now, this is not going to be a five-hour conversation or in-depth training on all the different scaffolding systems that are out there and so forth. This is just a very basic conversation about, hmm, is this good enough? The reason I'm kind of saying that is I'm thinking about a lot of the small kind of contractors, the tradespeople, so forth, that I work with in my area in the Ottawa Valley. You know, they do everything. They're trying to manage all these different tasks. And, you know, you have to be a, a master of a lot of things. And sometimes things don't get covered. Sometimes you have staff that are hired for a short time, seasonal staff. And these are all little things that you need to worry about. So scaffolding is one of the things when I'm kind of driving around, I see some of this and going, hmm, some people just need a reminder about why do we do things? So sometimes if you say, well, here to Sunsight, oh, this will be good enough. Well, scaffolding that probably doesn't cut it when we set up scaffolding. We want to make sure it is good. So here's some basic stuff that kind of, when you step back and think about it, it makes sense and should prompt you to go, hey, we need to do a better job here. Can we add some more training? Can we add some more practice? Maybe there's a better scaffolding system out there that suits our work, okay? There's lots of stuff out there. So scaffolding safety tips, proper training, just like anything else. If I'm a supervisor, I want to make sure my staff know what they're doing. They're competent, right? If they never set up the scaffold before, just like for any piece of equipment, I need to make sure I supervise them so it's done properly, right? Otherwise, scaffold could fall over and do lots of nasty stuff, lots of nasty stuff. So I don't want to see scaffolding with planking that's missing or missing pieces. Um, they say in sectional scaffolding, those cross members for support. It's not 50% as good. No, 100% of it should be there, right? Or that pigtails or banana clips that go on to secure things so they don't pop off, right? Don't forget to put them in. If you lose them, buy new ones. Don't stick a piece of wood in there, bend a piece of wire, all right? That doesn't quite cut it, right? But that's what we do when we think, well, that'll be fine. That's good enough. Well, it's good enough until it isn't, okay? So all those things matter. OK, even if it's only up there for a day or part of a day, it all matters. So make sure you're properly trained to know how the system works. Know you have all the pieces together, make it level, make it solid. All right. Follow the whole instruction program. Now, once it's done and every time you go to use it, right, just like any piece of equipment, just like the fall protection on whoop, individual over here. Right. We inspect it before we use it. Maybe some things happened. Maybe someone drove into it when we weren't around. Maybe the ground shifted, right? Ground settles. So on construction sites where we're disturbing it. I don't want to get onto a piece of equipment that has been damaged or modified between uses, all right? Which can happen. Maybe it was struck by lightning the night before. So make sure everything's still together and it still hasn't changed, okay? Because, right, it could be defective when you're getting on it. Not good. Stable foundation. Right, just like a house. If you don't put the house on a stable foundation and it sinks, moves, whatever, well, then nothing stable, nothing strong stuff could fall apart. And, well, yeah, on scaffolding, it's no different. I don't want this like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I actually had a customer tell me about a nice story they had in the wintertime. They were using some scaffolding and they had to do some work in the wintertime, but they had to thaw out the area that they're working in. So they tarped around the the scaffolding put a job site heater in there, and a couple hours later, guess what happened? The ground also thawed, and guess then what happened to the scaffold? It fell over. I'll oh, stop, stop and think. Well, it kind of made sense, right? You just melted the ground. The scaffold was on. So you need to take a look at all your things just to make sure you're not making an unstable situation, or it was maybe unstable to begin with. Guardrails, tow boards. Now, in the province of Ontario. If you are working off of a work surface on a scaffold, that work surface is 2.4 meters or eight feet, right? Where your feet are, you need to have a guardrail system in place, right? And how many guard, how many components for a guardrail? Well, there's three horizontal components, top rail, mid rail, and tow board. All three are there as well. They're attached to the horizontal uprights. So you need to make sure those are in place. And that's only at eight feet. That's not that high off the ground, all right? So make sure those are in place. You don't wanna be dropping yourself or dropping material on other people. 
Again, that's only eight feet. Access, how do I get up on these systems? Over here, you can see ladders. Hey, there's ladders, or sorry, not ladders, staircases, right? Excellent. Staircase is a lot easier to climb than a ladder. Ladders suck, all right? You need three, three points of contact, can't carry material. Ladders can only carry one person at a time. Set of stairs, probably can carry more than that, right? You do not want people climbing up and down on a scaffold like they're practicing parkour or jungle gym or whatever the latest fad is, right? There's nothing in a uh, electrician's training or a mason's training that tells them how to climb on things, right? No. So don't expect that to happen on scaffolding. Doesn't make sense. Uh, the decking. Make sure the decking's there. Make sure it's properly in installed, inspected. Could be wood, wooden two by tens or so forth. Follow the instructions in the with that style of scaffolding, right? Read the instructions. Weight distribution. Well, just like any kind of structure, like a ladder, you need to make sure the weight's distributed appropriately. That's where training comes in. That's where understanding your product comes in. It can collapse. Fall protection. You may need to wear PPE as well, but not necessarily attached to the scaffolding. May have to attach to a different structure. Weather. Obviously, lightning not lightning isn't good. Wind, rain, all those other things can be a factor in the stability and maybe the even just the usage or time of use of the equipment. And communication. Make sure your workers know how to operate around the scaffold. Maybe they can't be yelling. Maybe they need some hand signals and so forth to move and go around because there's only limited space to on a scaffold. And emergency procedures. What happens if someone falls off the scaffold? What happens if someone's injured or so forth? How are you going to get help to them, get them off the scaffold, off the system? These are all fun things to think about. So even if you're only using a two sections worth of scaffold, and you're working on a small residential place, it's scaffolding, right? It still needs to be set up properly and so forth. And it's the easiest thing to see. You're driving down the road. You don't have to be on a job site. Ministry inspectors see this all the time, right? So do it right. Do it, do it proper. Keep yourself safe. And make sure you don't hear the words, ah, that's good enough. Anyway, hope this has been informative, slightly humorous and uh, take the time to learn more about scaffolding, right?